solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh God, God that it should come to this, but two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king, but was so loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must, I remember. Why, she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month or ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body. All tears, married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month she married. Almost wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. To be or not to be, that is the question. But it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, it is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. There's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time but that the dread of something after death? That undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought. Then enterprises of great pith and moment with disregard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy horizons be all my sins remembered. Good my lord, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. Now take these again, for to the noble mind which gives wax poor, and give us proof of kind. There, my lord. Ha! Ha! Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? I truly. For beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is. I did love thee once. Indeed, my lord. You made me believe so. You should not have believed me, for virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, and ambitious, with more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in. We are errant knaves all, believe none of us. 
Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Oh, how can you, sweet heavens? If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry to a nunnery go and quickly to. Farewell. Or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery go farewell. Oh, heavenly powers, restore him! God has given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, and you amble, and you lisp, and you nickname God's creatures, and you make your wantonness, your ignorance. Go to, I'll no more on it. It has made me mad. To a nunnery go! I have of late Oh, wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. Forgone all custom of exercise, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof, fretted with golden fire, why it seems no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is man! How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. The rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast, it is not so. It begins with Pyrrhus. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse. Hath now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Head to foot now is he total gules, and thus o'ersized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish pierce old grandsire Priam seeks. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast no more. Sure, he that hath made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, gave us not that capability and godlike reason to bust in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, Thought which quartered hath but one part wisdom, and ever three parts coward. I do not know why yet I live to say this things to do, since I have cause and will and strength and means to do it. How stand I then, that I have a father killed, a mother stained, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep? While to my shame I see the imminent death of twenty thousand men, that for a fantasy or a trick of fame go to their graves like beds. Fight for a plot whereon the numbers cannot try the cause, which is not too enough and continent to hide the slain. Oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or nothing worth. 